Hey, welcome to Midas Letter Live for this Wednesday, August, or sorry, when, yes, it is Wednesday, August, August 1st. I'm, I'm a little bit slow today. Don't mind me. Probably one glass of Melbeck too many at lunch. Anyways, my first guest in our first segment is going to be Mr. Vic Newfeld, CEO of Apria. Vic, welcome back to the show. Great being here. Vic, I'm going to pull the gorilla and the elephant in the room out of the open, out into the open right away. Everybody in the marketplace thought that it was going to be a Freya and Molson Coors, and then, lo and behold, out of the blue, it's Hydropothecary and Molson Coors. What happened? Um, it's not what happened, it's what didn't happen. Right. Uh, and what didn't happen is a major global beer brand uh, making a, a real big statement in this space. If you read the, without a lot of clarity, the press release, it talks about a JV and, and a lot of research and development and going forward. There was no equity investment. There was no injection of, of uh, gray matter into hydropothecary. Rather, it was their contributions into the JV of trying to create a brand, uh, when I, not a brand per se, but the formulations of a non-alcoholic beer. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, not what I think the market expected. Forget the name hydropothecary. The concept was not as transformational as um, was thought. And, but, but to roll back in time several months ago, yes, the, the Miller Coors team uh, was, was absolutely in market, doing interviews, uh, understanding the strengths, probably um, concluding with their weaknesses of, of different companies, uh, where did they want to go. Mm -hmm. um, they landed on on an opportunity, I think, where the terms were correct. But the journey doesn't stop there. Molson Coors, not the Miller Coors, um, is is only one of many. Sure. Uh, and let's not be very let's not restrict ourselves just to the beer. Mm -hmm. Yes, beer is going to be the the biggest quote, loser, if I could say that, uh, as recreational comes. So just look at Colorado, at uh, Washington, Oregon, I mean, California. People are going to drink cannabis instead of beer. Non-calorie, uh, the high, the instantaneous. Right. You don't have to drink, well, eight beers for me, 12 beers for you, <laughs> uh, to get to that level. Um, there are, um, and they're, they're the first losers when it comes to the entertainment dollar. I mean, right. they're, they're, not, they're solid companies, don't get me wrong. But there are other spaces of beverage that one really needs to understand has greater strengths of market penetration with their own brands. Mm -hmm. um, Red Bull. Energy drinks, is that what you just said? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, energy drinks, absolutely. Uh, but does Pepsi or Coke really want to jump into this space? I'm going to suggest no. Right. But uh, so that would be the the Gatorades of the world. But the the energy drinks, absolutely. Juices. Just look at juices in total. Right. Um, do not discount those. Uh, and then spirits. Right. Uh, spirits, including wines. Yeah. There are. There's a lot of risks to brands that deal with the entertainment dollar. Right. Um, Beer being out of the box, demonstrated by Oregon, Washington, a losing market share, but others are also, and others have more of a of a global understanding. Um, who is out there outside of just Canada? So there, there's a global identity happening uh, in in terms of spirits. But right. I can, and I, I'd be remiss if I didn't also say tobacco, mm -hmm. whether it's JTI, it's PM, it's Altria. There are others that also have tiptoed in, an, in the European marketplace, whether it's Israel, Ireland, uh, already looking and evaluating, investigating, and, but aren't ready to jump in yet right. for a couple of reasons. One, October 17th, is it really happening or not? Cross that bridge first and foremost. Then what are the advertising rules? What are the penalties? What's the enforcement when you go offside? Sure. They want clarity. Uh, every best-in-class company wants clarity. So back to the, the Molson uh, announcement today, uh, when you read it, it doesn't really say much. There's not a lot of, of, of meat behind the business plan other than a JV. Well, the things that concern me about it, and I would like your sort of feedback on this, is that 
First of all, hydropothecaries put them themselves in a minority position. Throughout Canadian history, any company that's in a majority, minority position with a major global partner is subject to that partner's timeline and is no longer the author of their destiny, at least in that, that uh, iteration. Secondly, absent a capital injection from the larger partner, is it really an indication of faith or is this just a science fair experiment for them? Thirdly, the, the uh, stipulation was that Hydropothecary was going to have to give a whole bunch of warrants to Molson Coors to finalize the deal. So it essentially sounds like it was more or less a pay-for-play opportunity, and that's why I suspect there were four contenders in the mix, and Hydropothecary got it because they were the ones who were willing to bend over. Uh, sorry, I don't mean it that way. Your, <laughs> your latter point could not have been phrased any better. Um, listen, every CEO has to be accountable to their shareholders for value. The value that is on the books today, but the accretion of value tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we are, we have to champion that. We have to safeguard that. Um, in, in my opinion, there, if there wasn't some accretiveness that really had substance, that really brought value when beverages slash non-alcoholic beer being one of those def definitions, which we still don't know if it is or not and when, if it, if it doesn't bring value to me today in terms of gray matter, the intelligence, the, the consumer profile, the sharing of all that information with us, well, I'm, not, uh, I'm not too crazy. Right. There, as I said, um, uh, there are other spaces that, and very logically, so I'm not speaking out of turn here, very logically there are other spaces that have done a, 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 a lot of work, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of analysis, uh, just like the... Uh, Miller Coors team, bright guys, solid guys. Uh, they've dotted every I, and they came away with a deal that, to me, is more one-sided than yeah. than a win-win. So, what's uh, what's the freest strategy in all of this? I mean, the beer thing's been done. You know, Canopy's got their relationship with Constellation. Now we have this Molson Coors thing, which is, you know, doesn't doesn't excite me uh, greatly. However, you know, it might but it turn should out. have. That deal should have excited the entire space. Well, but it didn't. Absent some great. <laughs> you know. Yeah, okay. Um, so then, what is the? So you mentioned energy drinks. I, I prefer to think of them as utility drinks because you know the the five hour energy drink, the the Red Bull, but then you've also got drinks like like chamomile tea and mm. different drinks that are used and are marketed as remedies for different states of mind. Which I think cannabis is an ingredient in anything is going to offer that, as well as with the CBD component, you know, maybe there's a therapeutic benefit in there too. So, but for me, personally, as a consumer of both alcohol and cannabis, and yes, I do consume them both at the same time on occasion, much to my regret sometimes, but, you know, the bottom line is, I don't really want cannabis in my beer, and I don't really want alcohol in my cannabis, because the utilitarian aspect of both demands that, you know, I'll do one in one circumstance, I'll do the other in another circumstance. So do you think that it's probably more advisable from the standpoint of looking out into the future of where everything can have cannabis in it, that people are going to look to differentiate their consumption of cannabis from their consumption of alcohol just naturally without the government interference that stipulates that that will never be allowed? Wow. Where do I start on, on, on chiming in on some of these topics? So I want to first talk about the medical platform. Uh, medical yesterday, today, and tomorrow will not go away. There are forms of infused products that a medical patient would benefit from. Your mother. Um, you know my mother? My <laughs> no. She's calling me right now. From minor to mild uh, moderate arthritis. What better? And she's a tea drinker. Um, David's Tea, for example. What better uh, branding than a, uh, a tea bag that has and resonates with trust in a consumer, your mm -hmm. mother, mm -hmm. uh, where in her morning tea she's got uh, the equivalency of whatever CBD is necessary to, to combat some of the pain of her mild to moderate arthritis. Uh, or at night, uh, the, the tea drinker, coffee, K-cup, uh, Keurig, whatever. Uh, that has an element of THC and CBD for uh, sleep disorder. There are, f there are infused foods that are natural evolutions that are medically inclined. Uh, 
mm -hmm. um, from from gums uh, to mints. The, I mean, uh, cough the, drops. The, yeah, suckers, lozenges. There's a there's a whole bevy of of opportunities, but the government has to get there, right? And it's going to take time. So back to the October 17th. We know it's dried flower, pre rose oils, topical sprays, uh, but no vape pens. Right. And then after that, there's the, right now there's conversation, but nothing definitive on certain infused foods. And then I'm going to say beverages. So beverages are out there. Yep. And again, this deal is, it takes time to really do the R&D. I mean, you, you need to make sure that there's no separation, there's proper dissolution, uh, dispersion. Everything revolved around the safety efficacy of, of a beverage. Water soluble needs to be part of the all extraction uh, output. There's a lot of technology of equipment necessary. Uh, again, that's our center of excellence. This is all leading toward that. Um, where hydropothecary sits is, is irrelevant to me. What's important to me is there are various forms of infused foods slash beverages that need to come to the table. Mm -hmm. The first are vape pens. If you want to grab most of this, 15% of this underground economy are vape pen users. Mm -hmm. It's not here on October 17th. Right. You have now said goodbye to potentially capturing a billion, I'm picking a number here, a billion dollars worth of revenue from the underground consumer. Plus undermining your strategy of putting the black market out of business. Thank you, thank yeah. you. So back to your point, there are there these spaces, energy, uh, utility drinks, tobacco, um, spirits, wines. I mean, there are some women perhaps, calorie-wise, you know, the, the whole Weight Watcher thing, that maybe their red wine, their Cab Sav, that uh, is full of obviously sugars. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a look-alike. It's probably artificial flavors too, right. and it's injected with a certain level of of cannabinoids. I won't even talk about CBD and THC levels. Right. Um, it's going to be there, but is it really going to capture the lion's share? Yeah. No one really knows. People are are, are throwing out uh, anecdotal examples, uh, estimates that, well, look at what's happening in Colorado, Oregon, and Washington. I mean, uh, one uh, craft grower of beer out there is down 8% in volume already. One could also argue that people are just not wanting to drink beer. They've moved on to something else. Right. Have they looked at, have wine sales gone up? The entertainment dollar is this big. It's a matter of how much is cannabis, in total, the cannabis world, going to suck up and leave the other entertainment dollars to, to beer, wine, and, and spirits. It's an, it's an unknown. But I can tell you with a high degree of certainty, many other global leaders have done their own investigation for a long time. This is not like last month. This has been a year to two years in the making, trying to put position papers together, getting their committee, their board, eventually their chair CEOs on board with, do we or don't we? You know, what's it in for our, our brand image? You know, uh, is it good corporate conduct? There's a whole bevy of, of uh, hurdles uh, mm -hmm. and metrics they got to pass. Cool. All right, Vic, let's leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in due course and yeah. uh, pick up the conversation. Yeah.